Welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Today, my guest is Pat Lestrat. Pat is an energetic explorer, voracious reader, animal lover, environmentalist, contented hermit, constant gardener, and a health nut. Stick around. I want to introduce him to you. Hi, Pat. How are you? Hi, Nancy. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I can't wait to listen to all these interesting things that I think I'm going to find out about what you have done, what you do, and how you exist these days. But first, can you tell me a little bit about your path into veganism? Uh, it started about 10 years ago, uh, in earnest. Um, I became a full-fledged vegan, an ethical vegan. Uh, during the 10 years preceding that, I was working my way in that direction and I crossed the uh, threshold about 2012 and have been vegan since. And uh, my wife, Melina, and I are both vegans and we entered the path at about the same time and we stayed on that path. That is great. Um, was there a certain reason, health, animals that uh, led you there, spiritual? Uh, it was uh, spiritual, primarily, ethical. Uh, at the time that we began working our way toward uh, the vegan path, the food alternatives weren't so great. It was very difficult to find something that was satisfying and that appealed to our taste preferences for slaughtered meat. And uh, <clears throat> that's changing in the past several years. Uh, uh, advances in plant-based alternatives have uh, yielded quite a few great offerings that uh, mimic, uh, mimic meat. And with 3D printing uh, and uh, research, continuing research in taste and textures, uh, the food's quite good. And I see uh, continuing improvement uh, and it seems to be accelerating and adoption uh, appears to be taking off. And also, um, cultured meat is going to reach an inflection point where it becomes affordable. And so we'll see cultured meat uh, in the offering before very long. Uh, many of the fast uh, food chains, are, uh, uh, <clears throat> Burger King, for example, offers the Impossible Whopper. And we love it. You know, we eat at Burger King now. And uh, uh, McDonald's will be offering the McPlant. And as this starts to happen, I think we're going to see some acceleration, acceptance, and uh, people will experiment. And many of them will say, gee, this is not bad. It's okay. And uh, so in many of the uh, uh, high-end places uh, here in Houston, Hop Dotty is a high-end uh, hamburger place, and uh, they offer the Impossible Burger, which is great. It's wonderful. And uh, pretty soon they'll have... Uh, uh, vegan cheeses and, and uh, vegan dairy and vegan eggs. So um, uh, I'm hopeful that uh, we're going to see that within the next few years. Yeah. And you, as you said, I, I went uh, vegan in 2000. Uh, well, I've been vegan for about eight years now. And uh, what I was going to say was at that time, there were not a lot of choices and the choices that were out there were hard to find. Now every store carries them. I could go to Albertson, Smith's, uh, Whole Foods, uh, Sprouts, Natural Grocers, Trader Joe's, and everyone is carrying them. And as you said, they're tasting better and better. Right, right. And as uh, here in Houston, it's uh, H-E-B and Kroger. And uh, they there are... Uh, uh, meat alternative sections in the freezer boxes, which are populated. And uh, every couple of months, the, uh, the shelf space seems to increase. So I see that as a good thing as well. And, and I think also one of the main things, I mean, the food is already out there. It's improving. And people who are tasting it are liking it. I think now the big thing is to get uh, people who are flesh eaters to kind of move past that that's all they have to have because that's just a habit. That's just 
the normal, but you know, the normal isn't always the best. As a matter of fact, normal usually is the worst. So um, I think as people start branching out and experimenting, like you said, I think that they're gonna find that is not so bad. And perhaps this is the best thing they could do because it is the best thing that they could do for the planet, for the animals, but for their own health and the health of their families. <clears throat> There's a lot, a lot of thought leading um, uh, that can uh, help with adoption. For example, uh, some high-end restaurants have uh, conducted uh, blind uh, taste tests. Uh, a person is served a, uh, a cultured meat uh, dish, and right next to it is a slaughtered meat dish, and they appear identical. And they're made by uh, uh, Michelin starred chefs. And what we're finding is that there seems to be very little correlation between uh, the, the alternative, the, the cultured meat alternative, and um, a, uh, a taste bias. What they're finding is people cannot tell the difference between the slaughtered meat and the cultured meat. Um, I guess for vegans who might bridle the fact that these, these uh, tests are conducted with both slaughtered meat and uh, um, uh, cellular meat, it's a way in. Uh, it's a, sort of getting a foot through the crack in the door. And I see that as a good thing. I understand that. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about being an ahimsic gardener. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I have a garden that is fully matured. It's beautiful. Uh, it keeps me busy. It's my full, that's my day job. You know? uh, <clears throat> I'm very careful when I use a spade. Uh, I don't kill earthworms, so I don't dig. I don't need to dig because everything's there. Uh, even after a hard freeze, it all comes back. And so I've found that my practices increasingly um, entail uh, a mindfulness and awareness of the consequences of all of my actions. Uh, it's like going to the grocery store. Uh, I take a, a bag with me so I don't have to use paper or plastic. Just little things like that, that really, uh, the minute changes in the way we do things can bring a more wholesome, holistic uh, lifestyle. And um, so I try to be aware of all those things. So when I, uh, I've had friends, I'll feed Norway rats, for example, uh, I'll feed them almonds. And I'm, I've never had a Norway rat in the house. And my friends uh, will say, well, Pat, um, you're going to have rats and they're going to breed and they're going to multiply. And I said, well, OK, but I still feed them their almonds. And uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I've had non-vegans uh, always, they always, always bring up the food chain argument. And, and I think to myself, okay, look, uh, you're wise. We're not going to go there. We don't need to take that path because that's a diversion. And uh, so um, I usually uh, dismiss the food chain uh, argument, the fact that uh, cats, the, our kitties that we love very much, are natural barn killers. Uh, that's their natures. That, that's instinct. That's the way animals are. But as humans, we have the ability to rationalize, to think, to understand um, the balance of nature. Uh, and so that doesn't give us an excuse to say it's okay to kill. So ahimsa means no harm, right? And so I will do no harm. And sometimes, a philosophy, a belief, an attitude, an outlook, 
doesn't require a well-developed logical explanation. If it seems right as rain, then there's a very good chance that it is in fact right as rain. And so uh, ahimsa is something that I practice in all aspects of my life, not just gardening or with the animals. So uh, <clears throat> we don't uh, use uh, rat poison, we don't use roach poison, we don't kill spiders. I'll take spiders out on a spatula and put them outside. I don't want a spider to bite me when I'm sleeping, but we don't have spiders in the house. We have spiders outside. And, uh, you know, there seems like a natural environment and I respect them and their right to exist. And so my view is that all beings have an equal right to exist. And we have no superior or first claim uh, or dominion over the, the, the plants and animals. We would like to believe that. It certainly is self-serving, but I think that we, we all have an equal right to be here. And so just because we may have superior intelligence, and then again, who's to say, am I smarter than a dolphin? Maybe not. Uh, uh, dolphins can do things that I can't. And so what, how do you define intelligence? And uh, so um, <clears throat> my view is we have to look at them as our brothers and sisters and we're all in the same, we're all stardust, we're all on the same ride. And we have to find a way to coexist. And uh, rather than thinking that we have a superior right, and I, a friend of mine uh, said to me the other day, Pat, I look at it the same way you do. I do not, I think factory farming is wrong, but I like meat. And I says, well, then you don't think like I do because uh, if you eat meat, you're creating demand and that demand create, kills an animal. And, uh, and it's not just about abstention. There's a proactive side to it as well. That proactive side, is the compassion, the connection that you feel with all of the, the known world and the, the love that you feel for animals and the respect that you hold for them and the respect that you hold for their rights. So uh, abstention is only one small part of being vegan. And you asked me before what the reasons were and I said they were ethical. It's, I mean, there are lots of reasons, one, uh, the health of the planet. The Colorado River, before it empties into the Baja, is dry because we've been siphoning off water from the watersheds to support factory farming. We've not only depleted these watersheds and the aquifers that supply them, but we're also bringing degradation to those watersheds uh, with the chemicals that we're pouring into the watersheds. Uh, the the the, the climate impact of factory farming is huge. Uh, <clears throat> factory farming creates more uh, greenhouse gas emissions than the entire transportation sector in the lower 48 states. And then there are the health issues. Uh, it's, it's, no, it's not uh, voodoo science. It's a known fact that a vegan diet leads to better health. It's a more holistic approach to health. So there are health ramifications, climate ramifications. Um, the fact that there's so much protein that goes into maturing livestock, the, the protein multiple is horrendous. You could feed the world 15 times if you didn't feed livestock. That will ultimately be slaughtered because humans have a taste preference. So there's that reason as well. We could feed the world. Uh, and lastly, it's just the, the horrendous cruelty, the, the unimaginable cruelty uh, that takes place in farming operations. So I've said in the past, I said, you know, factory farming is bad. But again, I'd have to say that, that there's no humane way to kill another being. Uh, killing is a choice that you make because you feel you have a superior right to make that choice. You have a first claim on who gets to live and who doesn't. You get to pet your dog, but you can slaughter a pig for food. And so 
when you embrace veganism and go all the way, it's very difficult. Once you pull back the curtain, it's very difficult to go back. And it's very difficult to in any way compromise being vegan because there's a whole uh, host of contradictions that enter into your life. And, uh, and it's very hard to do it when you know, when you've seen. It's one thing to be uh, conveniently blind. And it's another thing to have seen and know and yet still make that choice. So it's almost a greater evil to uh, understand what it means to be vegan and understand the principles, the rationale for being vegan and yet still choose to kill animals. So uh, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's purely ethical. Now there are health uh, benefits and, uh, and there are all sorts of benefits that come with it. So, but I, I believe that those benefits are ancillary and the primary reason is creating a better world, healthier world, healthier outlook, uh, uh, a happier world. Thank you, Pat. It's been so wonderful to talk and listen to uh, the things that you're posing because it's absolutely true. Thanks again for being a part of the Vegan Pulse. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you, Nancy. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Remember to like us on Facebook, check out our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You don't want to miss an episode. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan.